goodness, it's quite something looking at that photograph, isn't it? Because I didn't do the first Body Stories campaign. I think most of you guys did. Well, you didn't, Frankie, obviously. No. I, I, oh, I still can't really look at myself. <laughs> But I'm loving the fact that I'm standing next to Brenda, who's having the best time ever. How are you doing, Brenda? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Good morning. Hello. Oh, it's lovely to see you. I love your attitude, Brenda. If you don't like it, tough. That's just the way it is. You know, I mean, for me, I, obviously, I, I had my breast cancer and I had my mastectomy. So I was really nervous going into my photo shoot at how it would look, because one is... Mum has said to me, and one is, is, you know, the one I was born with and grown naturally. So it was really important for me to do this um, this campaign this time round for this reason. Did you play with the filters a bit, or are you just not interested? I did play with the filters, and it was. I don't. Use, I don't put filters on. I don't even know how to do all of that stuff. You know, I've got my children, and they they, you know, say you've got to do this. But I'm not bothered about it. It's. I'm happy with what. I, I, my body that I have, and it is important to embrace what I have and show that that's this is me. And you know, if like I said in the VT, if you don't like it, tough. But you know, I'm I'm very happy with my body, and um, I I just hope that this campaign helps other people to to feel the same and feel the same body confidence. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I know you've said that it was a big decision for you to get involved in the first body confidence uh, campaign, but you're really glad that you did do that. Absolutely. I, I don't, I'm, you know, it's very rare you'll see me in a, in a bathing suit. I don't, even when I go on holiday, I'm the one that kind of keeps herself wrapped up. So doing that first photo shoot was, um, it was so, it was so empowering for me. And it was lovely to get the response from the audience and, you know, them saying how much confidence it gave to them um, to do it. And, and that in turn gives me extra confidence. So I think it's about everybody building up everybody instead of trying to body shame and put people down and make people feel embarrassed. You, you know, we're all individuals. Nobody looks the same, but just be happy and content with how you do look. Yeah, well, don't go changing, Brenda. We love you just the way oh. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know you've got to shoot off because you're involved with Hairspray. I see the posters behind you. Good luck with that. <laughs> Lovely to see you. See Thank you soon. You. Good luck, Brenda. Bye. Bye. And we're going to see Colleen soon. She's going to pop up too. But, I mean, Frankie, I guess the whole filter thing is much more part of your world. I mean, it's got more sophisticated, but mm. has it always been there for you? Um, I think, yeah, you know, there's always been retouching and stuff, and I, th I feel like people have got their heads around that in magazines and photo shoots and stuff, but I think this whole thing now with social media, it like, like it's been said, it is in our pockets. It's so readily available, and you can do it um, as quickly and easily as you want. Um, I have chosen not to use filters that smooth out my face and stuff on my Instagram, more so for myself, because I started feeling like when I was looking at my face, when I didn't have a filter on, I was disappointed that my skin wasn't as smooth as it looked in these stories that I was doing on Instagram. And I just thought, as much as that's affecting other people looking at my, um, my social media, it's affecting me as well and my self-esteem. How, how was it affecting you? Because I was disappointed in the way that I looked without a filter on. And I've, I've never done... You can get the apps like we have done with these pictures. I've never altered my body shape or anything like that. I've smoothed things out in the past. I will admit, I'll admit that. Um, but I've never altered my shape. And probably I have tried, but more to the point because I couldn't make it look natural enough. Um, but now I feel differently about that stuff. You know, that was when social media first began. And now I am just a bit like I would rather put a more honest view of myself across but also like I said for myself as well because mm -hmm. as much as it's other people are looking at it and thinking oh I wish I looked like that I was looking at myself and thinking I wish I wish I looked like that and I know. that's just I mean, insane. I think there was a real generational thing here isn't there I mean for me this is a little bit of a, a gimmick I mean I find it difficult to look at myself which is all sorts of baggage that I have going back into my dark and distant past. But when I read, you know, that 70% of girls in uh, the UK are retouching apps by the age of 12, and they have the digital know-how to do it. I mean, Jane, I'm not... I know you're pretty good with technology, but I just don't know how to do it. I'm not interested in learning how to do it, and so I can almost step back from it. Yeah. Um, but if you're growing up in it, yeah. then that's my a whole different thing. Probably like, mine's quite basic. I mean, I know how to change my hair colour on some app, yeah. but that's about it. Um, and I, I mean, 
It's just that thing. I mean, I, the, 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 I've never looked so pale, by the way. You know me, I like to go on holiday. I've never <laughs> looked so pale. And I like, the, what I did like about the, uh, the, fil the, the filtered one was that they gave me a nice all-over tan without having to get on an aeroplane. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's not real. And I do kind of worry that... I think you're right. In, in the old days, if for want of a better word, we knew that people in magazines were were retouched and well-lit and all of the above. Um, but I think a lot of young girls now don't realise that what they're seeing on social media has had all of those tools implemented, you know. And there are surgeons now in the country who they said that they used to bring in a photo of, I don't know, whoever Jennifer saying, Anderson. I'd like to look like this celebrity. They now bring in the edited photos that, of themselves, saying, I want to look like the edited version of me. Mm. Mm. And that, for me, is, is sad. Where are you with it, Stacey? Because you're very tech-savvy. I think that okay. most of the younger generation can see when something's been edited or filtered. Mm. I, don't think, I, I, I don't think they're unaware of it. Whether they realise the damage that it causes is another is a different layer. But do you layer. think they know that when they're ten and eleven? Yeah, I think that I think that if we're talking about ten and eleven year olds, maybe not. There'll be some subliminal sort of things sinking in at that age, which is dangerous. But as they get to secondary school, I think that there's so there is also a, that I think we should acknowledge some positive influence out there, a lot of positive influence, and social media is going into a direction where people are outwardly saying, this is what's normal, this is what's not. There's things like body stories that we started four years ago yeah. that where we were saying this is, you know, what yeah. people look like, this is what an editing app does. So I do think there's been a lot of awareness raised around yeah, those issues for children and young teenagers to know. Yeah. But I think, sadly... Like what Frankie was saying, even if I put a filter on and I want to be like a cute reindeer like everybody else at Christmas time, yeah. I genuinely sit there and go, I wish I looked like that reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually but really it's true. It's 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 into your brain. And all we're trying to do to say to people is know the difference between what is real mm. and, and what is what is false. Mm. Yeah. But even if you do that. As you said, Frankie, you start to look at it and you think, oh, I like that, I like that. And I wonder if we're actually in a position where you'll have people who are locked in this and they don't want to go out in public, they don't want to actually mingle because they control their own environment. But I know I've got Colleen sitting on my shoulder, which is a bit uncomfortable, I have to say. <laughs> How are you doing, Paul? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Good to see you all. You it's a great campaign. It was lovely to hear you say, because you were fiddling about with the filters and stuff, and you went, do you know what? I quite like I quite like the original. I really did. I was quite shocked, actually. I mean, that and the fact that I'm a technophobe, so I didn't know what button to press anyway to change it. Um, listen, I think technology, you know, we can't, you know, we can't stall it. It's there. It happens. You can have great fun with technology. You know, people have filtered pictures where I've gone, oh, my God, I look amazing. But I know it's filtered. I know it's not me. And I think if we teach... You know, certainly young teenage girls and stuff that, listen, hey, m probably almost 100% of the beautiful pictures you're seeing online have been filtered in some way. Um, you can have, you know, I'm not going to deny when that line goes across, I go, oh, look at that, I have no lines on my face. But equally, I don't want to look like that all the time because this is me. And, um, and I think we've just got to maybe be honest with it, you know, maybe when we put pictures up where we look amazing, you know, with all the hashtags you can put on, maybe we should say hashtag filtered, you know, don't really look like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just think it's... Um, I think it's really, really important for people that are putting themselves out there to influence young girls to be honest about it. Yeah, absolutely. I must say, Cole, when well, the first time I saw your photo, the, the only thing I looked at was your big, smile. happy smile. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you look, really? Yeah, you look so happy. <laughs> that's funny, isn't it? Because that's I all really I see. Was. It wasn't yeah, the first thing I saw, people. Colleen, but you know what I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you only ever see them, Kay. You always have. Speak to you soon, don't get me in trouble. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking a lot more about this uh, over the week. It is about being honest. And interesting that Colleen says that. I think in France there's actually legislation on yeah, social media. If you, you do have to say this has been uh, filtered or altered. And it might be something mm. uh, that you know we should consider here.